Hey, it's Brad. We're back with another WoW TCG deck tech. This time we're going over a raid deck, because why not? Let's try some of these out. This is a deck I made, honestly, a long time ago. Back when me and my buddies played, and we just kind of all played what we wanted to. And I wanted to play a DPS Warlock, just like I played in the video game. Yeah. So here's the version where I'm at, almost 10 years later in my life. So let's take a look at it. I call it Warlock Army DPS, because the whole time you're playing, it feels like you're kind of controlling an army. We've got this hero, it's pay two, flip him, and if damage we've dealt to him instead, you can have a demon be dealt all that damage instead. So basically, like, if the raid's gonna have someone take 15, you can put the 15 on you, and then just redirect the 15 to, like, a one health demon. You won't really use the flip much. Uh, in fact, there are many flips that are better than this, but I wanted to try this flip out, I wanted to try being undead, so I could grab some death fear. He's a great in PvP, I wanted to try him out in raids, and it uh, turns out he's pretty decent too. So the deck, we've got small threats, big threats, some utility, and some resources. The small threat, we take advantage of cards like Isad, who, I don't know if you ever saw play in the in the PvP mode of the game, like the normal mode, but he's fun in the raid. He's a 1-drop 4-2, so humongous stats. When he enters play, target opponent puts the top card of his deck in his resource row face down. The raids have all these rules with them where you're not really allowed to interact with their resources or their deck, and in many cases, even their hand. So this guy's really just a 1-drop 4-2 that the opponent doesn't get the, the good part about it, or the downside for us. So he's just huge. Got three of him, or two of. A Necro Bloodfang. She's a one drop, two one with ferocity. Can only swing at heroes. We can pump her up and make her a little bit bigger with Assault. And she's just nice to have as recurring damage. In raids, ferocity is worth a lot. So it's good to have that. Bazul, you've seen him a hundred times. He's a two drop, three one. When he comes into play, he shoots the enemy hero for three and you heal three. Sweet. Classic little dude. He always does damage when he comes into play. He heals you up a little bit. Takara, we're a four of her. Two drop, three fourths ferocity, can only swing at heroes, and whenever you do, they get to flip the top card of their deck, and if it's an ally, they draw it. Some of the bosses actually do have allies, depending on which raid you're fighting, but traditionally, most of them don't have allies in the deck at all. It's all abilities. So this card's just a humongous two drop to kind of go with our humongous one drop, except it has ferocity, so it gets way better, even late in the game. Like, why not just draw it? I got two of this guy. He's a two drop, two one, little dragon. Allies you control of Assault 1. He's not perfect. He's not very healthy. He has 1 health. So, But a lot of the times when you play him, you, you end up getting 3 or 4 damage out of him. And then he himself is basically a 3-1 because he gives himself Assault. So you'd be surprised how much damage you can get out. If you need a turn where you want to play something else, like complete a quest and play a 2-drop, this guy often fits into those plays. Or You can just play him and the amount of damage you get from the 2 or 3 creatures in play is just enough to lethal the boss out. So he's great as a 2 of. So the bigger threats, here we move on to the 2-drop, the 3s and 4s and 5s and 6s. Mazum, so I know you're used to seeing Hestriana. We, we do have one of her, but this is one of the main pets I want to play in this deck. Just a 3-drop, three 3-3 three, three that burns our opponent for 3 and we heal 3. This keeps us from taking too much damage, so the healer doesn't have to focus on as much, and it's just solid. Comes into play, deals some damage. It's really nice to have solid recurring threats like this. Or, well, not really recurring, but just damage that is very reliable. Death Veer. So having Will the Forsaken is the ability where if someone uses a destroy or remove from game effect, it basically does nothing. Or any uh, return to your hand effects also don't work on him. He has to be killed by lethal damage. He can also redirect damage, which is, is more relevant in PvP, but sometimes works in this game mode. Honestly, he's just a 4 drop 4 5 He's a little slow for raiding, but the fact that he usually just gets to stay is why we have him in the deck. Because there's so many wipes just don't work on him. So what happens is your opponent tries to play like a remove all allies from the game. So he'll get to stay around. And that's fine. Like at least you just have one dude around. But if your opponent tries to play a damage based removal. Like hey deal three to everyone with Frostbolt Volley. Well he can absorb all the damage from the other allies in your hero and just put it on him. Sure he'll die because he'll take like 12. But by stacking all the triggers like that where you just redirect all of them to him. You save the rest of your board. So he's almost always hard to deal with for the opposing player who's playing the boss. He's also a 4 or 5. Like, dude's just big. Garrosh. We have four of these. Speaking of big dudes, this guy's a 5 drop, 5 7 with ferocity. He can only attack heroes, so he's kind of a magic card. At the start of your turn, he puts an orc into play with 2 2. It's ferocity, and it can only attack heroes, too. But you get an orc for every orc you control. We have a number of orcs. So sometimes you just get the one orc, and you can swing for 7 the next turn. But sometimes you get 2 or 3, and you just kill the boss, basically. Like, you're swinging for 7. But more likely, you're swinging for 9 or 11 with the other things you're playing. So, 
We have four of him. Like, your opponent has to get rid of this card because it's huge. For five, they take five immediately, and you get a huge board from it. Every time you draw this, you're just trying to find a way to get to five mana and cast it immediately because it's really hard for your raid boss opponents to play against it. Still got two thralls. Here's another orc, and he helps the grind plan. He also pumps our whole team for plus two, two. When he enters play, you may put target horde card from your graveyard into your hand. So when he dies, you can usually grab back, like, a whatever is good in that matchup, like... Death Veer, if they have a lot of removal, that doesn't hit Death Veer. Garrosh, if we just want more Ferocity Threats in play. We've even got some things down here that help us get card advantage or removal in certain certain aspects. Frost Resistor, Frost Resistance ma matters sometimes. I'm not sure which raids, but there's a couple that do Frost damage, like Nax, or just random allies that do Frost. That it, It's nice to be able to have a huge dude who's immune to it. He's also a Protector, so sweet. Let's move on to Utility. This card, Nether Vision, look at the top five and then put an ally from among them into your hand. So if you play Magic, this is kind of like Ancient Stirrings for allies. Pay one, look at the top five and get an ally is great because half of our deck are more as allies. In fact, I think it's something like 40 something cards are allies. So this used to be Summoning Portal, the two drop one. It makes more sense, right? Summoning Portal can search for anything in the deck. It always gets you what you want. But let me tell you, I've played a lot of raids. Summoning Portal is just too slow every time. Every time I want to play that card, it's always too slow. Nether Vision doesn't always get you the exact card you want. There's a lot of redundancy in this deck, and digging five to look for something is pretty powerful. So I have this up to a four of now, because a lot of the times you will have one mana in between plays, just like the one mana style quests, and you don't have room to cast a summoning portal, but you will have room to Nether Vision, grab something, and plan for your next turn. Trust me, it's actually really good. Try it out. Sardok, we have him as a two of. Honestly, you could have him as a 4 of because he's so incredibly good versus so many of the raid bosses. As a 1-drop 2-2 two -two with physical resistance and a protector, he can like straight up shut off raid bosses. Like, they'll have 10 assault, but they're a melee. So he's just like, hey, well, a fun raid boss guy. <laughs> I left him as a 2 of because, yes, it's good to have. Sometimes you need it, but sometimes it's just not fun for your the, the guy playing the raid boss. And, and he'll let you know, like, audibly, he'll just say, yeah, this is not so enjoyable anymore. Like, you, you play a guy in turn one, and they've already lost. Usually they have some more removal than that, but with having too many of these in the deck, just started to make raids boring, so I took him out. Also, it being a pet limits the other pets you could play, and I, I want to play something different than what I play in PvP. I don't want to just jam Hesriana, like, every turn three. I want to, you know, I want to play something a little different. So, two of Sardox, fine. Morik, check this guy out. He's, like, my MVP raid card. A 3-mana 2-2 two -two with Ferocity. So, that's not bad. I use him to trade into stuff a lot. Whenever Morik attacks, each player draws a card. Alright. So, the raid boss gets to draw one, too. But the moment you play and swing with this guy, it's like, you probably have two or three other raiders there, so he's already like a 4 for 1. And then if everyone in the raid plays him, and if he survives and you get to swing with him again, he's an 8 for 1 all of a sudden. <laughs> this guy is just one of the MVPs of the deck, and... I almost never resource him. I love having him. He also helps the aggro plan. Like, he does everything the deck wants you to do. He's also an orc, so big boy Garrosh gets more tokens from him. Try not to trade him out unless you have to, because drawing more cards is super sweet. And your your teammates will love you for this, especially the people that don't build raid decks and just have, like, no way to draw cards. This is nice to kind of pull them back into it. Kramarius Blackfist. Here's another orc. 3-drop 2-3 three three when he enters play. Destroy target opposing ability if its controller has more abilities than you. We have no ongoing abilities, so we're probably going to hit with this guy. He's really just a 2-3 a creature. He's really statted okay, and he's an orc, so he helps with the Garrosh plan. Uh, he's just a removal to kill on ongoing abilities. There's often going to be like devastatingly powerful ongoing abilities, so having a reliable way to do that in the damage deck that no one's really expecting that you can also try to find some copies with nether vision if he dies you can pull him back with thrall later in the game and if it gets to that point so this gives us four ways main deck to kill ongoing abilities let's jump over to this card zaylin ragewind is a four drop three four protector when an opponent's hero readies you can pay one and destroy an ability or an equipment that opponent controls this guy doesn't really seem to fit with the rest of the deck he's not very aggressive he's kind of expensive but he serves as two more ways main deck to get rid of ongoing abilities and two ways to get rid of equipment. And you're going to find most people who play raids have no ways to get rid of equipment. Most raids just don't have any. But there's one or two where the equipment is like stupidly powerful. So it's nice to have at least some way that your opponent's probably not going to be any 
isn't going to have a way to counterplay this because if their guy's tapped and you play this with five mana, you're going to kill something. And that's his job. He's also a 3-4. He's a protector. He does a lot of things to the board state that opponent may not be ready for. So anyways, we got damage. We got utility. We got card draw. What else we got? We have a one of Hesriana. Kind of tired of seeing her, but she's so good in some circumstances that we just... Sometimes you play her and you kill a big dude with her. Hooray. Let's look at Anastina. I have her as a one of in the deck. She's a five drop, two, six. Empower Warlock. So when she enters play, she will deal two shadow damage to all opposing heroes and allies. Pretty cool little effect. You can play more of her if you know you're going against a raid that has a lot of dudes on the field, but this just kind of extends the range of what this deck can do because it can play powerful single target cards, like tall cards, like this guy who's huge on his own, or go wide with a bunch of different creatures, kill single target creatures with this, or trades. Uh, and this way we've got a, the ability to board wipe, but only on our opponent's stuff. It's not like some kind of universal board wipe like Wrath or Pyro. Just really powerful. And there's a lot of raids where pulling this out is like, oh, dude, we just killed all the protectors and we just win now? She's pretty neat in a raid. Let's move on down to the resources. Torex Assault. If an opposing hero is dealt damage by an ally, pay one, draw a card. Very simple, very cheap. For Great Honor, pay one, look at the top three, and get an odd cost of one or more. This misses a lot of the cards, but it also hits plenty of them. Like, so just looking at this row, you miss all of these. You miss the Thralls and the Death Veers. You get almost every card. Actually, you get all these. Uh, this one, this one, this one, this one. So there's so many cards that you do hit, you're likely to hit. And it's cheap. Only costing one means you're, you're pretty consistently going to be able to weave this in in between your other spells. So there's six of these that cost one. And four legendary heroes. Here's another raid all-star that I like. Pay one to complete. Draw a card unless target opponent turns his hero or one of his resources face down. Typically, most raid decks, you can't interact with the resources and you can't flip their hero. So this is just pay one, draw one anytime you want. So that gives us 10 quests that only cost one to draw a card, in addition to four nether visions. So we've got a very flexible plan with our one drops, in addition to another, what, five, six, seven, seven more one drops that are castable. So we are almost always doing one to two things a turn with this deck. That's all the cheap card draw. Here's the expensive ones, defiling the defilers. Got some redundancy going on there. If allies you control dealt five or more damage this turn, pay four to complete and draw three. So it's a pay four, draw three if you did some damage with your dudes, but a lot of the, like, almost any two creatures are able to trigger this quest, and if you're ever running low on cards somehow, pay four and draw three, you'll draw one more the next turn, you really just fill your hand up off this quest, feels pretty nuts, a little slow, but that's okay. A Rathy Basin, I've got, this has a two of, when you play a card, add a counter, tap, remove five counters, draw a card. You'll probably draw one to three off this over the course of a raid. There's only two in here, so you shouldn't have to worry about the redundant copy that much. But hey, it's card draw. It's going to keep the deck going. This deck is just going to keep, keep keep playing dudes every turn and smashing and killing abilities, drawing more cards, playing more dudes. You get the deal. So most raid decks don't have a sideboard. You're probably like, well, why, why do you have a sideboard, dude? Honestly, I started playing such a huge variety of the raids and all these weird custom ones, and I wanted to be able to make up for... You kind of don't know what you're going to be playing with or who you're going to be playing with. Sometimes you want to have ways to make up for what their decks don't do. So if, if you need healers, my other healing decks will have extra heals on the side in case there's no heals or something along those lines. So we've got three more of her in case you know you're playing against some sweeper deck. It's fun to be able to pull those in. Everlasting Affliction. We don't actually have any talents in this deck, and I think our hero is always oh, Demonology. Oh, but that doesn't matter because uh, this, this new style of card doesn't matter what your hero is. It just prevents you from putting other types of castable things into your deck other types of talents so we are affliction technically with this one this thing attached to a hero and at the start of your turn does a damage and you could tutor up the other copy of this put it into play so in case you're playing against some kind of deck that allied allies just don't work against like maybe the hero is elusive this is one way to get through to him or if you're playing against a deck where it's one hero the entire game and he never switches then these everlasting afflictions will be on the hero the entire game pretty good for three mana to the point where you're going to start ticking for four a turn seems good and then this card's kind of funny. Enslaved Demon. Attached to a demon and then you control it. This is... I'm waiting for the moment where I get to play this. I don't think I've actually slotted it in, but man, it seems funny to just drop this on... You know, your, your opponent plays some big, like, 5-5 five, five demon, and you just 2-for-1 them, take their demon. I guess this is specifically for Black Temple, right? Because that raid itself is so hard, you need the help you can get, so... 
Why not? Why not sideboard and just kind of cheese the opponent out? The deck's already super strong. I've played a lot of different raids, and this is the deck that most consistently kills the bosses. Whenever we play, we always stack up the bosses next to the player who killed them all, or or at least per player. And this deck usually has like five to seven boss kills. It just it's so consistent, just dealing damage and ferocity and recurring and dudes and board protection and drawing more dudes, drawing more dudes, and ripping their ongoing abilities that matter. So. This deck is really the one that does the work. Well, everyone else in the raid's having fun, they're doing things too, and they're keeping you alive. This is the deck that's probably going to dish out like 80 damage over the course of the game, so or course of the raid. So try it out. This is probably one of my favorites, but hey, also, it's, it's a Warlock, it's Horde, so it's just bleeding all the things that, that represent me. So it's kind of fun because these raid decks, they're so unconventional that you get to build them however you want. And you all could take this deck and refine it into your own... Your own strategies. It'd be fun to see what you guys come up with. See you guys around.